There we go. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> okay. So, orientation is locked. I guess I could adjust this. Okay. Six people. Hi. Let me just fix this because uh, it's annoying the hell out of me. All right. So... I guess I do it like that. Alright. So. Hey. There we go. So I'm going to be rigging a big stick bait. Okay. There we go. What's up guys? Uh, I have a monitor here. Uh, I just don't know how to make this bigger. Live chat. There we go. Hey. Okay. New lesson. Yeah, I guess. So, uh, thing is, I have this, right? And it's rigged with big um, troubles. And I wanna, I wanna, what do you call this? I wanna rig it with double singles. And this is kind of a different thing. I'm pretty sure that it's something that not a lot of people know. But I don't know if it's also applicable to a lot of people. That's the problem. Don't tell you fishing. You're 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 always present. You're kind of like the class monitor. <laughs> The past few days, I have been rigging jigs, um, deep liners actually. Sorry, 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 sorry. So I've been rigging deep liners because I ran out of sea falcons to rig. So I've been, I've been rigging uh, deep liners, and uh, I've I've done some really. Uh, really nice stuff actually but um, let me take this so that I can actually see what you guys are saying but um, I don't know I mean some stuff is like kind of complicated and uh, I don't know if if a lot of people are willing to actually go through the work that's the problem Oh man, I learn a lot of stuff while I'm doing stuff. <laughs> That's the thing. One of the things that I actually have done today that's pretty cool is this. And I don't know if this uh, doesn't have macro, but, but look on Instagram and you can see exactly what this is because now i have a way of actually doing something very minimalistic and that's very important because uh what you what you really want something like this where the hook is just uh you know secured at the very end and irregardless if you have regardless having flash or not this this is something that you really want <sighs> Okay, so my Siri is stupid. It started talking on its own. Anyway, so I cracked this today, which is pretty cool. And then I also cracked 
That's just not that. Where is it? It was, uh, yeah, this as well, you know? And this is kind of uh, also very difficult to do. The, the first one here you could do quite easily because you get your, you know, you could easily tie the knot, but doing the same thing backwards on this is actually very difficult and uh i've managed to figure it out and i'm pretty happy so you know both with the eyes and without the eyes i can rig them and uh wow yeah it's uh pretty uh pretty stoked <laughs> And it's just one of those times when you actually do something and then, you know, like after a few hours of just looking at it and then you just go like, holy crap, you know. Anyway, um, I think one of the, you know what I want to share today actually um, is something that I have learned over the past few days that made my life easier because I've been rigging a lot of... Um, jigs i think the tools that i have been using is something that a lot of people would find useful you know um first thing is instead of a an ordinary bobbin you should have one of these for your fishing and you could use it to actually tie uh assist hooks and this creates this drag system creates a lot of of uh, tension so when you're tying it literally gets tied really tight and the color it this colors it kind of uh, makes it um what's this uh tra almost transparent that's very important it means that you're you're binding everything really tight and that's very important because if you're binding it really tight all you have to do is just do uh, a pass going back and then a pass going forward and you can tie it off and that's already very strong so before you even glue things you know that's already on there tight and then here's a annoying thing you know when you uh, when you cut with scissors it's always fuzzy and it's not straight okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna do this off uh, camera and then check that out so freaking clean right so this is a a cable cutter and cutting this Cutting this is very, very easy when it you're using this instead of uh, instead of uh, what do you call this? Uh, I'm hearing myself here. Where's the volume of this thing? Oh, here it is. There we go. I was getting distracted, but cut, using this to cut the uh, assist cord, see, see the fuzz right there? Okay, let me cut it. And it's super clean. So this is a very useful tool that everyone should actually have if you're making your own assist. And these are not expensive. Um, I have an old one and I asked Wild to actually buy this and said like, hey, buy this because it cuts the cord really clean and if you're just cutting cord and you're not cutting um, what do you call this you're not cutting wire it's gonna last a heck of a long time so that's that's uh, that another thing I use a lot that I feel people should use I'm gonna actually I'm gonna show you two uh, here's all I got this from Daiso and it's really cheap. So if you look, okay, 
I see it's smooth and all it is is just the grip okay so uh, this and there's another one here and look at the shape it's not your usual pair of pliers if you look okay there's literally no gap okay let me actually uh, this is very important okay so when you're choosing stuff like this you actually do it's it's kind of weird but you have to do it okay flashlight okay put it at the back like that you see that you see a light right but this has like the uh what do you call this these uh grooves so it clamps on tight what you need to do is when you get this okay you go like that you don't see the light okay you see at the tip you don't see the light that's very important because it means that the gap is closed and when you pull or when you clamp on it's gonna clamp on tight and I use this for gripping the very end of let's say when I'm tying a knot and I'm, I'm gripping the very end just to help me tighten stuff and that's very 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 important and a lot of people miss out on that so if you're using long nose pliers stuff like that that's that's fine but these have more surface area okay see so these tools all right now um scissors are great and everything the problem with scissors especially when you're cutting um, let me do a demo here you're cutting braid all right and i'm gonna have to show you this because after a while it kind of gets annoying and you don't even notice it you know so example we have and we're gonna when you're doing this you're gonna cut the tag end right so it's always this now this is an old pair see it takes a while now here's a new pair okay see very easy so scissors are great when they're new but as they get older guess what they're useless so here's a solution right because you need something that you could you could use over and over again kind of and constant it's always constant see these all right and then uh i don't know how abu dalem i don't know i mean i just went live so i don't know if it's available laptop or not i used my uh here so i mean i could view from the uh what do you call this from the uh, tablet but i don't know anyway going back so with these things at least when you use them up you could just either cut to make the blades new or uh just change the blade you know with the with the scissors the problem is you know once they get dull that's it can't use them you have to throw them now these are kind of disposable which is fine i mean if they get dull you could you could easily just you know uh replace them the problem is If you have stuff like this and this is fairly expensive okay this I think is about $30 okay and if I use this on braid which is it is it's a pair of braid scissors a problem with this is that if I use it and then they get dull what's gonna happen Alibai Abdullah hi so you know i'm gonna have to throw it away and then i lost 30 dollars but if i'm using 
this, and this was bought from Daiso, right? So I use this, I throw it away. How much is a, is a box of uh, the, the blades? They're freaking cheap. So yeah, if you're doing a lot of this solution right there, I mean, I have that and I have a heavy duty one. And uh, this is great. The problem with this, of course, is that the, the blades are fairly more expensive. But those, they're really cheap. So, you know, something for you to actually think about. All right. Now, um, lately, I've discovered something pretty cool. And I've done this on the... Uh, I've actually shared it in the... Uh, you actually own Bait and Tackle? Uh, no. I don't own a tackle shop. Although my office is like one. <laughs> well stocked. <laughs> uh, I, I work in the uh, in the fishing sport fishing industry okay so I work as a consultant for several companies and uh, yeah that's that so I'm just basically a guy sharing what he has learned in the industry to a lot of people that uh, you know are kind of clueless I'm going to try uh, and pull through sharpener, especially for scissors, might be a game changer for braid scissors. Um, the problem with braid scissors, I don't know if you've noticed, is that one side is actually straight and the other side is uh, serrated. And you do that, or they do that, because if they're all smooth, it's gonna slide. But with the serration on one end, okay, so like take for example for this, this is the smooth end and this is the serrated end okay and it's the same for this one this is the serrated end and this is the smooth side so you can sharpen the smooth side but not the serrated part so that's the that's the issue uh, i mean i've been i've been doing this for years and i've designed um assist hooks for two huge companies so you could just imagine how many assist hooks I've actually made and still make in a uh, even in a daily basis I could say now so this has become a very essential tool for me but yeah I mean to each his own that's up to you test it out see what works for you and if you're uh, what do you call this if you are uh, comfortable with the scissors go right ahead I mean for me the scissors have been my partner since my fly fly fishing and fly tying days which uh, Again, I've been also been doing for donkey years. So I'm very comfortable with the scissors, but when it came to actually making assist hooks, that was kind of a problem. Anyway, um, thread. All right. So as you can see, I have a bunch here. This is a fishing braid, actually. Really, really thin fishing braid. So there's... Uh, I have several that I use, okay, uh, I use braid instead of, uh, like, I don't know what others are, but there's one thread that I really like aside from the, uh, the braid, and it's this, it's kind of like a embroidery thread, it is, um, it's also Japanese okay but this is kind of uh, a bit stretchy a little bit stretchy and what it's good for is actually absorbing super glue okay so if take for example like this it doesn't if if you put super glue on this and you run your fingers and actually go like that it gets taken off okay because braid or HMPE the molecules they repel a lot of the glues and other stuff like even water so this is the reason why they actually float because they repel water so when you're putting glue the coating actually just protects the wraps and what's holding the assist hooks together is actually the binding or the tightness that you're putting on so uh, what I like about this though is that this is not glued okay 
and I could go fishing and use this and it'll be perfect okay so there's two schools of thought here there's one that uh, or oh, sorry it's I use this so yeah I'm gonna have to glue this but uh, like here this okay so like if I don't glue this and then I use it it's fine only problem is if there's some toothy critters and then they'll bite the uh, wraps and then you know by chance they just hit the wraps and then it starts to unravel but for fish that don't have teeth even amberjack they're 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 gonna survive that's the thing so putting glue is just really something that will make the uh, what's this it'll just make the or it'll protect the wraps that's it okay now another thing I want to share is fluorocarbon is not the only thing that you could use to make your assist cord stiff and especially for the front hook when you're doing jigs usually it's shorter okay so this would be one uh, two-thirds and this would be one third so the length okay and then you have to also make the top stiffer and you would need something that would make the cord stiff or uh, use cord that or is already stiff um, which is hard to find there are several brands though problem is stiffness of course after using it after using it a while it goes away so it's better to have something in the core that's stiff a lot of people use fluorocarbon however it's not the only one as I've mentioned so I'm gonna share something with you guys especially those um, especially those that don't have access to this all right and if you have not figured it out yet this will be something that would be well it'll change your fishing uh, at least improve it okay so first let me look for the appropriate size right there here we go so the tables a mess so this is hollow it is 120 now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a an assist hook um yeah we'll make an assist hook just so you guys can see okay so we cut that and we take the core off okay so for this one and lately i've been using a style of tying that involves a knot at the very end here it's what shimano actually uses so we're gonna do that rigging okay so there's the core all right and then the clever part is wire coated wire it's as simple as that guys okay this is 20 pounds okay and you just cut this a bit longer than needed so that you have some wire sticking out which is what you want and then all you have to do is just insert it easy you don't use a needle or anything yeah now once you have that sticking out look it's stiff kind of like having fluoro in there right now what you do is make an overhand it's very simple very very simple and when you do this it gets locked and it doesn't get kinked okay well it kinks but for this it's all right right see that right there now it's gonna get kind of nasty because usually I bite this and just you know but we'll try not to okay so this put it at the back right there and then start pulling like that now remember I said something about the grip 
put that put that up no, actually let's use this okay put that over at the end right there and then pull so that forms a knot and that becomes your stopper okay and at the same time what happens is that it stops this bit at the very end here from from moving okay so if you're working on on this end and there's a knot here it stops everything from moving now all you have to do is just cut it like really really close right there because guess what it's not gonna move see that's it and then burn that a little bit okay now if that there's a little bit of the wire sticking out if it bothers you that much okay get a file file that down if you use a diamond file it's faster it goes faster okay all you have to do is do it until it lines up with a knot and you're golden that's it that's it that is it now take the other end and do the same thing and I know a lot of people have been having trouble with their assist hooks getting cut by toothy fish so I hope this actually helps you now this is what I do just to tighten it Put it between my teeth and then just bite that's it okay again i'm gonna just there even if you cut it really close and then just burn it a bit like that that's gonna stay and the thing is okay you have your stiffness right there for the front hook you could use this at the back as well okay but that gives you a very good uh, uh, assist cord to work with and it's tooth proof plus the thing is invisible you know so I mean it's gonna move just like uh, an ordinary assist hook 20 pounds is good it's not that uh, light it's not that heavy obviously you could put 30 40 whatever okay uh, just as long as you have the uh, or just as long as it could go inside your assist cord but you can't go too thick because if you do that it's gonna affect the movement so for me 20 has been pretty kind all right now um, whoa again so I have been using chase and they've been very very good kind of expensive though I mean there's only four inside a pack but that's one jig so you know but let's uh, use this and all right so okay I love these they're really good okay now uh, let's use yellow so you can see that the main ones that I use have these drags that enable me to tighten them and what that does again is when I put the braid onto the hook it already has pressure so the first few turns it's not gonna be you know it's not going to be um, tight but the next succeeding one would be very tight and that's it that's uh, that's what I want so those these ones here are very tight there we go and that's very important okay so now let's put this 
This would be a back hook, I think. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what, what end this is going to be put on because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm kind of not uh, measuring it against a jig, but I'm just thinking the effort. We should actually, <laughs> we should actually measure this against the jig, just, just so, just so you know, we can use it. Um, just for the effort. So we'll we'll use this here. At least. Okay, so this is gonna be the back hook for, for this jig. <laughs> Stupid. Alright, so see it's going on tight and then what I do because fly tying vices are not really made for the kind of torque that you put in. Okay, so what you do is if you have like a gooseneck like this, you could grip, okay, and if it's a rotary, uh, I grip it like that and put my thumb on the bottom, that way I can really torque it down like that, okay, because for this type of pressure, it will, it will pull this down and trust me, this vise actually has a really good grip on the hook. Um, I have this vise for fly tying and I don't really advise getting a, an expensive vise for um, tying assist hooks because it, <laughs> it could get very expensive. Alright, so this isn't, this isn't too bad. This isn't too bad, but it's still, you know, about 300 dollars or so so yeah plus the shipping is more expensive than the freaking vice because this comes as a set and it has like a, 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 a base and the base is very heavy so shipping shipping was more expensive this is than this damn thing all right so you see this um i don't know if you guys could actually see i i, I wish i had zoom but i can't but with this it is very tight and very neat actually so all we have to do is go back again you know um, especially when you're making stuff for yourself you just slow down okay there's no there's no hurry here okay You can see that the color is turned transparent. It means that it's very, very tight. Now, all you do after that is they're finished. Now, a lot of people use half hitches. That's fine. I use a uh, whip knot, okay, or a whip finish. I'm a fly tire, so <laughs> it's just something that I got used to, okay? So, one... And I usually do five, two, three, four, five. That now, since this has become a tip video, scissors, okay, like that, and then pull. Because what happens is that it actually twists. So when you actually bring the scissors down, it kind of nests it and it'll make your wrap better because there's no twist in it then all you have to do is just tighten it okay and then your your uh, your wraps will be nice and even now when you cut this as you can see what i've done okay i just put the knife and then take the bobbin bobbin holder and then uh bring it to my right what happens is that the tag end is going to be hidden inside the wraps so it's very clean that's why when i do these things you know um you don't see the wraps all right 
Now, another thing that I have been doing you know, for you guys that have cars and stuff. Alright. This is... Ouch. That hurt. Okay. Uh, okay. There we go. So this is a wiper blade. And what this enables me to do okay so this is when you have a like your it, take the wiper apart there's two blades okay and stainless steel so what this does okay what there's there's you could use this for a lot of things but um, what I do with this is I use it to apply super glue and it's great because it's stainless steel so the glue although it kind of like for this one it dries up on the blade itself you can easily scrape it okay and uh, once you scrape it clean the flat surface of this thing is very good for applying super glue okay so I have like a super glue here I'm just gonna the tube and I open the uh, the lid so that I can access the tube and all I have to all I do is see all I do is just take that and pull out I have glue there and I'll just apply it like so it's kind of like a um, I don't know what it's called but the painters have it you know it's like uh, that tool and all it is is just you kind of just applying the right amount so you don't put too much and it doesn't it doesn't drip all over the place Okay. So what happened here is that I busted the, the nozzle. And super glue doesn't dry up a lot, even if it gets exposed, because the, the hole on this is actually actually pretty small, so it doesn't dry up. Even if there's no cap. So instead of throwing it, I said like hey, you know what? I'll just do this and it's been better because now I can apply it to the exact places where I want it and this whole thing applies it very clean and it doesn't drip that's it all right so for you guys who don't have cars just ask your friends because most of the time we replace this like once or twice a year you know and uh, if they have a spare and they you know it's very useful when I was a kid I actually used this to pick locks <laughs> true story alright so there we go alright that's it and look at this See? It's springy. And it's super thin too. Oh, that's pretty cool. Alright, so take the other one. And you might notice that I'm mounting it upside down. Okay? Because if you're mounting it right side up, the concentration of your wraps or where you need to actually uh, concentrate when you're tying is up here all right so you have to flip it around if you have a rotary vice but just out of habit you know I put it upside down and it's already the side where I need my attention in okay so we put a thread base always always in fly fishing it's the same thing okay 
thread base. So the first few are not going to be tight. Okay, so loose wraps. And then after that, after a few wraps, you 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 uh, you basically snag the uh, the end of the fr the uh, the tag end of the wraps, and then you tighten down, and it just grips, and that's when you start going back like that again. You know, it helps if you just put your thumb there. It's two things. It keeps the hook from moving. A, B, it gives you leverage so that you can apply more force. Just like that. Okay. Uh, what the heck? Okay, there we go. Now, another tool, this one right here. Boom, okay. I don't know what they're called, but they're, you know, Ikea. You can find them in Ikea. All it is is, uh, it's stuff you have to, uh, to, uh, put on bread uh, like if you you know loaves if it's open you twist the the end and then put this so that air doesn't get inside and ruin it so you know that's that I don't know what they're called okay <laughs> that I didn't even know that when when I had that accident earlier I uh, Hit myself with the uh, point all right so this is hard to manage because things are uh, are uh, hanging off right here but after the few wraps okay so tight really tight wraps here and all it is is to secure it so it doesn't move around okay now what I will do is find a way actually because normally if this has an eye you just wrap it around and then put it like that but you can't with this because it doesn't have an eye but maybe you can just go like that and clip it to make it shorter So it's kind of out of the way there we go so that's that that should be enough all right so there now we can wrap and just actually you know what let me put peg that in place like so there we go and then now we can concentrate on wrapping it as clean as possible There we go. So make this bigger. Hey, and it, someone say something. Holy crap. Come on, guys. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Tight. 
Again, the trick that I showed you guys earlier, okay? Very sharp knife, okay? Just so you're cutting the tag as close as possible. Go to the base of of the knot, okay? Like that, and then take this to the right-hand side or whichever side and have this cut it just go like that and have this cut it don't move this just move this and what happens is that there's a little bit of stretch right so as soon as it hits the knife it cuts it and then it goes in to the wraps so there's no tag and it's clean so we have that and look at that no kink yeah no kink beautiful see now all we have to do is just uh, put the rings and we have some rings here good thing with this also is that I mean as soon as you put the knots in it locks into place because it's wire so it's not gonna move these hooks are so sharp be very very careful now when you're applying glue right so with this let's uh, put the glue actually let's glue that up just so it's done the thing the thing when you're putting glue on this because the coat is very um, thin you know just thin enough to coat everything and for it not to drip right it dries up really fast as well so that's a bonus okay one of the very big advantages of this method I don't know if the chat is is uh, moving or not, but someone please say something. Like, where are you guys from? I know. Uh, Just say where you're from so that at least you know where people are from. Alright, so that's it. Right, now, look at that. It's nice, see? Nice and stiff. So you want the stiffness, I'm, I'm putting this on the fan so that it dries up a bit faster, but the reason why you want the stiffness, especially on the uh, front hook, okay, or the top hook, you could do this for the back as well if uh, you, you keep on getting tangles or tangling on your leader. So that's what's needed actually. If you keep on getting tangled with your leader like uh, while, you need stiff assist cords. Okay, so let's do whoa. This is an issue here they're so sharp that once you try to just once you touch them you'll feel them you know and you always have that reflex you know to uh, so fall and tighten 
that's not going anywhere okay right there so you can see now what I want to do with this is actually tie it up bind it so that it's easier to position and it looks cleaner that way as well okay all right so uh, a lot of people have uh, a problem starting this so here's the trick so you do this all right you just take two turns or so right that way that doesn't move then you just take this okay I like this as short as possible like that and then I just position it at the very end at the base of the knot right there okay they're so sharp they're so sharp that it it actually sticks in your hand so that's that's what kind of scares me all right so again let's tighten this up here so that it is aligned with the knot right there i do two turns before i start and then just push with my thumb and i push it towards the knot and the momentum would just take it there once that's done i take this off because that thing hurts okay and uh, at this point yeah also have a choice to actually cut it or not so just for the sake of this being done clean I'm gonna cut off the tag okay and do all of this right there okay now I'm gonna make this long up to here all that I do is mark the length with my thumb so that when I get there okay all, all I do is push it back towards the knot again and I'll make a couple of passes going back and forth just to ensure that this is stiff and it's almost one piece one piece Woo. so because we're gonna glue this up as well okay there we go so about three passes one two three it's all cinch it tight and then cut it as close as possible right there okay there we go that's how sharp that thing is and then we have beautiful pair right there so all I have to do now is just super glue this fix it so that it's uh there we go that's it and you can see it's nice there we go then shorter piece here we're good to go but that's it now all we have to do is just glue this thing and uh, we're golden okay again just cleaning this because it does uh, get the uh, super glue bunched up there that's it all you want is for it to go inside your tube easy
I can't make the hole bigger than it already is because having a bigger hole there will actually um, make it dry up faster see you don't need much a lot of people tend to overdo it and uh, put too much there we go it's just to keep things together so that when it hits uh, sharp or uh, rigid objects like rocks or something it doesn't come undone but that is it okay there we go oh, that wasn't so hard was it see super clean simple and uh, it's, it's it's not too stiff not too stiff and not too uh, just enough to actually just use it, it's just slightly stiffer than um, fluorocarbon because the the line is thin there we go all right now let me just open this so that at least we can see how things went um, I need Now, if you're curious, this is the uh, deep liner VB, and this is 350 grams, I think. It should say in the packet 300 grams. So what I want to do is take a uh, I want to take a solid ring or a split ring and then put it at the back and then we'll do a front because we did the back this was I didn't want to cut it short I didn't want to cut it short because I I don't want to waste the wire so both ends will be both ends will be with wire and uh, at the end of this we'll see how things actually look when it's fully rigged and we'll repeat the process for the wire all right so with this okay so this is the heavy side right here some jigs even if they say that the you know the the, the side with the eye is where you put your uh, assist hooks if you actually check which one which side is heavier sometimes you'll find that it's this the silver side but supposedly all deep liners where the eye is that's the side where you put your um, hooks not all the time though I've, I've had like several jigs I don't know why but there were several jigs where you know you test it and it just flips just like that and this side is heavier or maybe they they you know manufacturing it they intended it to be one thing and uh, once the jig was finished it was something else Alrighty, so there. Now, there's a huge thing saying that, oh, your hooks shouldn't meet. Now, the thing is, your hooks can meet, 
but they shouldn't snag each other. So sometimes you'll see that when I measure stuff, they actually, the hooks actually meet, especially when you, you pull them in and the, uh, the split rings are positioned like this. And sometimes in the water, it does, that does happen, but just as long as they don't snag each other, that's perfectly fine. All right, so for this one, the next piece is going to be quite short. But as you can see there, that, ouch! Ah, oh, I've been stabbed several times by this hook. I promise you, these are so sharp and uh, so good. Ouch. All right, so there we go. Um, let's start the... Uh, a shorter front hook okay that hurts man that freaking hurts out of the packet they're so freaking sharp so and you know these are again these are owner uh, jigger medium chase okay the assist hook version of this is made like uh, for fast jigging. I mean, you know, people, even the manufacturer actually told me like, yeah, but you could just flip them around and then they could be for slow jigging. But there's a purpose why these hooks are actually bound together like this. Okay. And not spliced singly. Now, if you're... If they're spliced singly, okay, so splice here, splice there, and then they're, they're spliced to the ring, what you could do is flip them around and bind them, and it'll work better. Because the purpose of that is when one hook manages to get in the mouth or on the side, the other one immediately snags. You don't want it to flail, flail around and then after that snag, okay? What you want is when the fish bites or grabs it or it grabs like one side of the face of the fish, it immediately grabs the uh, or some part. You don't want it to flail around because if that happens, if it moves around, there's a chance that it's not going to be, it's not going to set it's not going to set right. Like my dog. Okay, I have two dogs. Uh, the one that just came in is Strider. She's a girl. But Strider here is kind of weird. Okay. Um, Strider has a bone right now. And she's showing it off. And she always takes it to the room because, well, I'm her alpha, obviously. And what happens is that she wants, she shows it off and she thinks I'm going to take it from her. And, you know, dogs have this, it's their habit. They, they show it and they kind of want you to take it because you're the alpha. They want you to like dominate them and everything. And then, you know, I keep on telling her like, stride, no one cares about your bones, <laughs> you know except for you she's a funny dog all right so again we take that and then we knot this all right so since we're doing it uh, we're doing a short piece i kind of don't care about the length because majority of the length from this, okay, and we want the hooks to be here, some somewhere like that, okay. So let me just fix this. It's super hard. Because at the same time, I'm also freaking scared. All right. So we want the hooks to be like that. So majority of the length, if you think about it, would be taken up by the hook. So 
not so much as the uh, length there a little bit of course but remember that you're gonna have to tie a knot here as well for the uh, solid ring so cut the tag Now, I'm going to use pink for the top just so it's different, you know. It's boring if they look the same. It's starting to get dull. After this, I'm gonna have to throw it away. It's, that's like I don't know how many how many of those I've actually thrown away over the course of uh, designing and making assist hooks. Especially when you're designing, you know, you 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 actually break, make and break because. You have to go through several iterations. It's not plus testing and all that. So it's not something that you just say like, hey, this is a good good looking uh, design. And this is it. You have to test it out and all that crap. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Right now, I'm going to have to measure this and see where we're at. Okay, oh, perfect! Good. I thought it was gonna be too long, but it seems that we're gonna just have the right amount. See? Bends down. If you put a lot of pressure, it, it gets bent down. So it's good to go like that and then put your thumb there so that it counterbalances the force. The good thing about this um, bobbin also is that this is hard steel. Now, if you have something like this, this is just a tube. It'll bend. So, it's good to uh, put 
it's good to use this as your tying tool. It would be able to take a lot more pressure. Okay, as you can see there, I spiraled. I spiraled going this way so that it will oh gosh there we go so spiraling will make it so that you peg this in place and it will be in position so that when you make your wraps it's cleaner and uh, you can make it tight Okay, that's tight. The next time I'm going live, I'm going to try Facebook. Because uh, I've tried so many times with... Uh, YouTube, but I haven't tried, I haven't experienced anything or going live on. Uh... Man, that's tough, Braid. Holy crap. What? Ah! Whew! That was scary. <laughs> that was scary. Alright, there we go. Now I can see it, so bang right there. That is tough braid, I can tell you that. All right, so now that is done. My least favorite part, guys, seriously. Okay, so let's just to stretch it out. Okay. And it's wire is uh, kind of tricky to do this with I have to admit but once you get the hang of it it's fine okay there we go I don't know if I screwed up. I hope not. Should be alright. <laughs> oh god. Because it's it's sharp, so you know. It's sketchy. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Mm. Man. Right. 
So we have that sorted. Now all we have to do is just bind it. Again, just because this thing is sharp, it becomes kind of sketchy for me. So again, like that, kick it. Okay, so okay. Now two wraps to the knot. One, two. So it starts at the knot. Make sure this thing is there we go. Now we PR this thing. Okay, I want it to stop at around there and then push back like so. Another pass. It's the reason why it's hard to actually it's difficult to turn is because it's quite tight. And you need a lot of momentum to get the centripetal force going. There we go. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now we just cut and we're done. Okay. Either this is tough braid or the uh, I don't know how to do this easy right so put it in the vise so that we don't get in trouble because it needs tension so that it's easier to cut there we go so that's done then tag end should be easier there we go and then so I'm gonna glue this only after because uh, we're pretty much the same right but what we need to do is actually mount it on the uh, jig Okay, so a little bit of uh, fixing here and there just so they're in position like that. Okay, twist this a bit. There we go. So like that. My nose is itchy. Okay, so put this and we'll see if our measurements are off or not. I hope they are. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be kind of embarrassing. I spent one hour, 20 minutes doing something and it was wrong. Alrighty, there we go. So, even if they meet like that, just as long as they don't snag each other, okay? And this whatever position it may be they're not gonna snag each other right that's it but in reality what happens is that your uh, toe point is going to be here so they're never really going to to snag each other okay even if they wanted to because once you drop this down this will be like that and this will go like that drop down and then when you're working it up what happens is that this swims like that and this goes up now wrong side okay said it'll be like that okay so you drop down this drops this goes up on the drop this goes like that 
And while you're working it, when it's going like that, these would be going like that, you know. Once it stops, these guys would actually just plop in position like that. And those are the only types when, when they would be going like that, when it's actually fluttering. Yeah? When it's fluttering, these guys will go be, will be like that. Like that. These, these actually have a little bit of drag. So, once this drops, these would be up there like that. It's only when you actually pull it and then they become uh, horizontal. It stops, goes like that. That's why when they bite, they get snagged. But this is toothproof right there. And uh, this should serve well. Well, all right. So that's it, guys. It's been uh, an hour and 21 minutes. Holy crap. I will be publishing this um, as a video and just so that you guys have access to it. All right. So is there, are there any questions at all? Please ask. Otherwise, we end the stream just like that. But it usually doesn't take me that long to, uh, to make these things. But if you're discussing stuff, then, yeah, kind of hard. Alrighty, so let me just put this back. So YL does this, right? He uh, rigs everything and then puts them back. So for me, the whole thing about this is that I am, uh, I was like, hey, let me rig some of your jigs because uh, we're putting together a... Uh, a jig rigging library so that people have a reference right I was supposed to earlier I was supposed to rig uh, a stick bait but then that's gonna be a bit more complicated and then I haven't found the uh, all of the materials so let's just forgo that and uh, I think I'm gonna do that later all right, so yeah, anyway, I'm gonna publish this as a regular video so that people would be able to see and I really hope uh, the guys that are here have learned something. Again, if you have questions, now's the time. If not, I'm gonna end this. Um, we have about seven minutes left. So if you guys have questions, go right ahead, please. And I'm gonna open the... Uh, the uh, iPad here. Just so uh, I can see if there are. Oh, look at that. Sawadi from Thailand. You know what? The the chat here didn't move, huh? But here, it's like. Um, so, Keen. Keen Ao. Uh, if you're still there, hello. Uh, I'm based in Dubai, and uh, Abu, Abu the 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 Lem, Saudi Arabia. Uh, yeah, Dubai. We're in the same region. So, that's it. So. Uh, six more minutes. I guess we are going to end this. Uh. Wow. That was fast, huh? I mean, I was just, I was just talking and rigging. And then it, it was already an hour and... 24 minutes it, this could be a podcast <laughs> it's one hour 25 minutes yeah all good um don't tell you're welcome my pleasure so i hope uh you guys have picked up some tips next time i'm gonna be rigging this this is uh 
there's what there's two actually this is an excess and there's another one here it is a there we are it's a fast jig so the excess is actually a, a slow jig and this is a uh, a quick cb1 jigs and they sent us a few to play around with so i'm going to be rigging this and uh these of course you can you can use from shore shore jigging this is a 45 gram this is a 50 gram and there's a bunch i have like 30s or something that uh we could uh play around with but definitely something that i would be rigging for the jigging le jig library uh i think there's there's a few from sea falcon as well and uh, I have these are from Nature Boys. This is the spin um, spin rider deep. So we're gonna be rigging this. This is uh, 360 grams. So I have two of these. Uh, and. You know, these jigs are kind of unique because these are steel jigs and you can recycle these. Uh, steel jigs and they're not lead. Alright? So they're not lead. They're like steel, steel. So they rust. So quite interesting. Uh, obviously, you run a grinder on them and then, uh, you know, they'll be as good as new. We have uh maxell drunker so i'm gonna be rigging this as well and i've already rigged the dragonfly and there's another one that i rigged i think it was the uh i know i i, I like that thing too the uh bumblebee it's a clone of a lector. But this only goes up to 210. You know, I wish there were something like this with at 400 or 350. It would be good. So Yeah. There's a few that I still I still need to to uh to jit to uh, rig. And uh some, some I don't have names for. I don't know what they are. And then there's still some small ones from Sea Falcon, but they're, you know, the bigger ones we've already rigged. So it's not much of a difference. So what I want is uh, some others that that actually. Like the long ones, I, I know that I have jig paras, jig para longs. I'm gonna rummage through what I have, which is a lot actually. We're gonna be rigging some some from hot and um I have some clones here as well that we're gonna rig. Because um like let's face it. You know, a lot of people have more clones than they have the original ones, but it's good to have the original ones. That way you have a reference. Um, I, this one right here. You know, it's a clone. It's a clone of a deep liner. I don't even know which one, but it's a clone of a deep liner. And uh, everybody knows this one of the favorites and again this is a clone and this is kind of sad uh, so this this is a clone of this and everybody knows this because this is a freaking institution this is a koika this is an original and this is a copy and if you look at the copy the copies look better than the original it's just sad but we will uh rig these up as well okay just so we have a reference but this these are easy these are very easy because at the end of the day you know 
Um, since they are, uh, what do you call this? Uh, copies or clones of the original, and the original is not only a lure, but the company that owns it has a hook company. So all you have to do is just take the production hooks and put them there, and and they fit perfectly. They fit like a glove. So that's it. Anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, we're about a minute over for uh, we're we're one hour and thirty one minutes. I had fun. I actually, had fun. All right. So I think after this, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna like just publish this because I really want to have a video up. Um, and obviously this since it's it's a uh, it's a very good tip tips uh video well let's just put it up there so that people can can see it um since we don't have questions i'm just gonna go offline and that's it okay so yeah no questions all right, so that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and class dismissed.